Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to continue solving rational equations. But on this day, we're going to have three or more fractions involved. This is completely different than the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we were able to use cross multiplying. But now that isn't the case. You'll definitely want to take some notes, and you may need a calculator to help you along. Our objective is to solve our rational expressions with three or more fractions. Let's take a look at this first example. My goal is to find out what x values make this equation true. We're going to combine everything from this unit and the previous unit to solve this equation. The first thing I notice is I am adding fractions. In order to add fractions, I need an LCD. This is from our previous test. Remember, your LCD is each denominator once. So I have a 2 and I have an x. I have another x, but again, I don't repeat myself. So my LCD is 2x. Next, we want to multiply each fraction by the piece of the LCD it's missing. So if I take a look at the first fraction, 1 half, it has a 2 in the denominator, but it's missing the x. So top and bottom times x. The next fraction is 2 over x. When I look at the LCD, it already has an x, but it's missing the 2. So top and bottom times 2. The third fraction is 1 over x. Its denominator is x, which means it's missing the 2. Let's simplify what we need to multiply. 1 times x over 2 times x. 2 times 2 over 2 times x. 2 times 1 over 2 times x. Now what's really nice when you're solving, you no longer need that LCD, which means if I have proven that I have an LCD, I can currently just ignore it and solve the top portion of my equation. So I'm gonna simplify all of this down to one X plus four equals two. Again, my goal is to find out what x equals. So if I keep solving, I'm trying to get x by itself. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I end up with x equals negative 2. Now, just like before, you have the opportunity to check your answer. So let's take a moment to do that. If I plug in a negative 2, for all of my x values, I should end up with a true equation. I have 1 half plus 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 equals a negative 1 half. So if I think about this, if I'm at a half and I subtract 1, I do end up at negative half. So my answer checks out and is true. So my final, final answer is x equals negative 2. Let's take a look at the steps that we went through. The first step was LCD. The second step was to simplify numerator. The third step, solve numerator. Fourth step, check your answer. Let's go through those steps on another example. The first thing I want to do is find my LCD. This is going to take a little bit of work, as one of my denominators needs to be factored. This one is just difference of squares, so that's pretty quick to obtain. 
and this 2 is technically over 1. So my LCD is each denominator once. I have an x plus 1, an x minus 1, another x plus 1, I don't want to duplicate that, and a 1, which I could certainly fill in, but I don't need to. Let's take a look at what each fraction is missing from the LCD. My first fraction is missing the x minus 1. So I'm going to take top and bottom times x minus 1 equals my second fraction. And I'm going to keep its denominator simplified. My second fraction has both pieces of the LCD already. So I'm not even going to use that one. My third fraction has a 2 over 1. If I look at the LCD, it's missing both pieces, which means top and bottom need to be multiplied by both pieces of the LCD. Step two was to simplify the numerator. This first numerator has a monomial times a binomial which means I need to use distribution. I end up with a 3x squared minus a 3x over the LCD, which I could write out, but I also see I have both parts, so I'm just going to write LCD. Equals. My second fraction already has my LCD, so I didn't need to multiply anything. My third fraction, though, you'll notice that I have a binomial times a binomial, which means I need to FOIL. If I FOIL, I end up with x squared plus 1x minus 1x minus 1. Middle terms cancel, and I'm left with x squared minus 1. Now remember, all of that still has a 2 on the outside all over my LCD. Let's simplify this numerator just a little bit further. I'm going to distribute that 2 onto both of those, which means I end up with a 2x squared minus 2 all over my LCD. Now I'm going to solve the numerator. I have a 3x squared minus 3x, I have an equals, I have a 12, I have a plus, and I have that simplified numerator over here. Because it's plus, I don't need to worry about any parentheses or negative issues. Now, I'm trying to solve for x, so I have to decide to move everything to the left or to the right. I'm going to move everything to the left. It's up to you, as we should arrive at the same solution. If I subtract 2x squared, I end up with x squared. still have a minus 3x. I have a 12 minus 2, which is actually 10. So I'm going to subtract 10 over to the other side. If you need to show a little bit more of work there and actually simplify before you subtract, please do so. Now, this is from our previous unit. I have a trinomial equal to zero, which means I need to factor. If you need to show your AC method, please do so in your notes to make sure that you arrive at the same solution that we have here for our factors. And that solution is going to be x equals negative 2 and 5. Now, if I wanted to check those two answers, I would have to plug in the, each x value into the original equation. So if I plug in x equals negative 2, it's going to take a little bit of work. You might have to use your calculator here when you end up with some of those fractions. But we end up with 6 equals 6, which is a true statement.
if I check x equals 5, you'd want to plug that in, simplify it down, and you end up with 2.5 equals 2.5, which again is a true statement. So both of my answers check out. So we're taking all of the previous processes that we have used and combining them into one. Again, we're using that LCD rule. We're simplifying, we're solving, and then we can check our answer. Let's take a look at one more example. First step, state that LCD because we're adding or subtracting, that's very important. The LCD is each denominator once. I have an X plus one, I have a two, and I have an X. Because they're being multiplied, I can separate them. Times an X, well, I already have an X. We don't want to double up. This right here has caused issues in the past. So that's why I'm separating it to make it a more clear statement. Step two, we want to simplify. I want to take each fraction and multiply it by the LCD it's missing. So let's start off with our first fraction. It's a 3x over x plus 1, which means it is missing a 2 and an x. So top and bottom times 2x. Plus sign. Our next fraction is a 6 and a 2x. This fraction already has a 2, already has an x. Therefore, it is only missing the x plus 1. The third fraction is 7 over x. It already has an x. Therefore, it is missing the x plus 1 and the 2. x plus 1 and the 2. Let's simplify that numerator. In my first fraction, I have a 2x times 3x, which gives me a 6x squared. Bring down my plus sign. My second fraction, I need to use distribution in the numerator, 6x plus 6, equals. My third fraction is going to take some work. Take care of each piece individually. So you need to decide, do you want to take care of the 2 and 7 first or the x plus 1 and 2 first? Do not distribute the 2 and the 7. Let me explain what I mean. I'm going to take care of the 7 and the 2 first, which leaves me with a 14 and an x plus 1. Now that's going to distribute and I actually end up with a 14x plus 14. On some of the assessments, I saw some confusion about how many times we distribute and possibly FOIL. So just be very careful, do one piece at a time. If I look at the denominators, they're all the same, which they should be because that's my LCD. Because I am solving, I don't need that LCD anymore. So now I want to combine like terms. Solve for x. I've got a 6x squared. I'm going to subtract my 14x to the left side. Again, whichever side you decide to move everything to is OK. I'm going to subtract 14 which brings me down to a negative 8. Now, I have everything equal to 0, and I have a trinomial, which means I need to factor. But before I factor, take out that GCF. It'll make your factoring much easier. 
Keep bringing that GCF down. If you need to show your AC work, please practice. This has a leading coefficient of three, so our factoring takes some work. I'm going to write out the factors, but I would definitely recommend that you show the AC method. So I would pause the video right now and make sure that you're good to go with that. Once you set each factor equal to zero, two equals zero doesn't make sense. So that GCF in the end, we don't use it, but that's only because it was a constant. Our x minus two equals zero gives us x equals two, and our three x plus two equals zero. Subtract two and divide by three, we end up with x equals negative 2 thirds. So I ended up with two solutions as I did in the previous example. If I want to check my answers, it will take some calculator work or some very precise algebra work because one of our solutions is a fraction. So please take your time. If you check x equals 2, Be very careful, as you'll still end up with 7 over 2 in a crazy fraction. If you check your negative 2 thirds, you'll end up with, again, a very large fraction. So I'm going to say be careful. Okay, It is definitely worth checking and making sure that you're typing it into your calculator correctly or simplifying correctly. For this last slide, this is going to be your exit ticket today. What that means is when I ask to see your notes, I'm going to check for this question to see how you did. Take your time. Follow those steps. Identify the LCD. Simplify. Solve. And then check your work. When you're working with that LCD, here's a hint to get you started. Take out a GCF first. Good luck. Let me know if you need any assistance. Utilize the Sabre Center, and we'll see you soon.